Hello and welcome to Grade 5, Dive in 5. I'm Barbara Knox. And I'm Daryl Frost. Welcome. Today's session is going to focus on adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers with unlike denominators. So on the next slide, you'll have your first task. We want you to pause the video and complete that task either by yourself or with a team or partner. While you're solving, consider the three questions that you see on the slide. What vocabulary might students need to use when they're discussing that problem? What prior skills would a student need prior to solving the task? And what equation matches the task? We'll see you back in a few minutes. <laughs> So here is the progression with VEST. You see it's a third, fourth, fifth grade trajectory. Just highlights, highlighting some of the skills. Students need to understand the idea of equivalency of fractions, how to compose and decompose fractions, which leads to uh, operations with fractions. This particular benchmark in this scope is on adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers with unlike denominators. I have a few questions on the slide. So thinking about this problem, what connections to prior content can you make, Daryl? Well, they've been working with fractions since third grade and they were performing operations, adding and subtracting uh, fractions with like denominators in third and fourth, or in fourth grade. So they're used to, they've drawn visual models of them to make sense of them. They, I mean, I'm sure the teachers have done that here and they'd want their students to do that as well. So that's a connection to- You know, uh, I don't even see fractions in this problem. Oh, well, that's true too. Yeah. I see a bunch of whole numbers, numbers, right? So they're having to make sense that I'm talking about parts of these pizzas here. Right. Interesting, because I could see some kids just saying six, four, two, and the answer's 12 pieces. Right, right. <laughs> And then thinking about how this task connects to addition of fractions, I first have to turn those leftover pieces into fractions of the whole pizza in order to be able to add them together. Yes. How does this uh, support the idea of creating equal size pieces to add? Well, because I'm having to think about two different pizzas and I know from third grade that anything that I'm doing with holes i need to, when i'm talking about fractions i need to be talking about the same size hole so in this case it's two pizzas but i need they need to be the same size hole so i'm using that knowledge from third grade to apply here so then if i add my sixths and my fourths together what size are those pieces going to be well that's where that leads to having to think about the to get a common size unit that's the same thing as a common denominator right So I know that my pizzas are rectangles. So here's a whole pizza in the shape of a rectangle. Mm -hmm. I have two pizzas. One of them is cut into six equal parts and my other one is cut into four equal parts, right? Yeah, I see that. I know that there are only two pieces of pepperoni pizza left, so that means four pieces must have gotten eaten. Makes and I sense. know that there's one piece of cheese pizza left, which me means they must have eaten three of those pieces of pizza. Correct. And the question's asking me what fraction of pizza is left over. So here are my leftover pieces. I am going to put them onto that whole pizza rectangle sure. so that we can add those pieces together. That's a start. And I like how you labeled everything. That's really important that students label their pictures, drawings, etc. So I don't know how to name my fractions if they're not all the same size. No, the cheese pizza slices are larger than the pepperoni pizzas slices. Mm -hmm. I have to really be able to make them all the same size because I know when I'm dealing with fractions, I'm adding pieces that are the same size together. Right. So I'm going to try some of my fraction bars and I'm going to try the eighths. 
And all those eighths there. fit very nicely onto yeah. my fourth, right? Yeah, right. Well, let that makes try... sense, fourths and eighths. Yeah, let me try the eighths on the sixths, and let's see how they fit there. Ooh, that's not going to work, is it? Nope. Mm -mm. I could also try tenths. Let's try, try tenths, tenths Okay. Okay, the tenths aren't going to work on the six, and oh, they're not going to work on the fourths either. I can't use tenths. Tenths. So I'm having a, a, a little bit of an epiphany, if okay. you will. So going back to that cheese pizza that has, is one slice there, you decomposed it. Uh, that That's fours, but then you decomposed it into eights. I and did. I'm, and I'm using my number sense, okay? Mm -hmm. So I renamed oh. fourths into eights. And two groups of, or four groups of two is eight, or two groups of four is eight. Mm -hmm. And eight is a multiple of four. It is. So are you saying that we need to find multiples of four? Well, but, but six, six is not a multiple oh. of four. So we need to find a common multiple that'll work for both six ah. and four. So I've got to have something that will work with both. Let's try twelfths. Okay, let's see. Because I could do twelfths, uh, yep. right? Yeah, okay. Uh, well, oh. Yeah, it worked. Look at that, that Yeah, yeah. Two twelfths is the same as one six. Yeah, and two times six is twelve. There we go. And I got two more twelfths is the same as my other yeah. six. It's really looking like an array. I think it's going to work for my fourth also? Yeah, well, four times three is 12, so there should be three slices ah, that will go on that fourth. There's my three slices that take the space okay. of that cheese pizza. So I'm thinking I have to figure out how many pieces make a whole pizza if I want to know what those seven pieces represent as a fractional amount. Well, I can visualize that. There's going to be 12 slices on that whole pizza there, so mm. the... The common unit we already said was 12, so there it is. There we go. There's my 12th, and seven of those pieces are what I'm counting. Right. I've now got four pieces of pepperoni pizza and three pieces of cheese pizza left over since I cut them into equal-sized pieces. Correct. All right. So, Barbara, I see here that you've gone from the concrete, you use mm -hmm. those fraction bars that everyone right. has in the classroom, and now you're do, going to that representational model there. I am. Yeah. I'm going to a, into a drawing, right? So I have my pepperoni and cheese pizzas modeled. They're both the same size rectangles, and I'm going to split my pepperoni pizza into six equal parts, and I know there are two of those parts left. Right. And the cheese pizza, how many parts? Well, it was, it was decomposed into fourths. And how many pieces were left? Um, one fourth was left. One piece of the cheese pizza was piece, left, or yeah. one fourth. Yeah. So I have my two sixths of a pepperoni pizza and my one fourth of a cheese pizza, and I am going to split them both into equal size parts that are the same size. So I split my pepperoni pizza into 12 pieces, and I split my cheese pizza into 12 pieces. Yep. And I think it's also important to note here with students that it's not about, it's a representation. So even though they probably don't have pieces that look as exact exactly and precise, beautiful. if they can explain it and it's close, that's what we should be looking at, right, right. Barbara? But we do want them to be as precise, precise as possible, as but possible. not like taking out a ruler and having right. to draw that. Right. It's All right, and so we have the uh, pizzas there decomposed, and now I see some abstract ideas. Yeah. So you've gone through the whole CRA process I here. I have. So now we're going to get into that abstract thinking, connecting it back to that visual model yes. to help the students make sense of it. So I have two sixths of a pepperoni pizza, and we know that we split those into twelfths. What happened when we did that is we took our two pieces that were left over mm -hmm. and cut each one of them into two parts. So it, can I think of that two mm -hmm. times two because this is fifth grade? Yeah. I could go back to that groups of idea. Yes. Two groups of two pieces equals four pieces, and I see them shaded there. Yes. And at the same time, I was splitting all of my six pieces sure. into two equal parts, right? So each one of my six pieces became two pieces. Six so I had groups six of two groups pieces, of two. so I have a total of 12 pieces. That's yes. the whole. So now I know that my two-sixths is equivalent to my four-twelfths. Yes. 
I take my cheese pizza and I split it into twelve. Into twelve. So how many um, pieces did I have to make out of each one of these pieces, Daryl? Well, the fourth was decomposed into three twelfths or three slices or three so twelfths. I took those. I took each one of those fourths and I split it into three equal parts. So one my group of one three. leftover piece is now three leftover pieces since I cut it. All four of my pieces together, each one of them was cut into three parts, yeah. right? So I have, I have four, four groups, groups of, of three. three slices. So I think that groups up works nicely. Yes, here. it We're does. Two. Okay, then I can take those two equivalent fractions, my four twelfths, which is equivalent to two sixths, and my three twelfths, which is equivalent to one fourth, and then I'm going back to my fourth grade standards and I'm adding fractions now that do have like denominators. And I know when I add four parts and, seven, and three parts of the same size pieces that I'm going to have seven parts. And I know that those parts are twelfths. Makes total sense. But you have to go through that CRA process to get them to this. Yes, point. you do. So we know that there are many misconceptions when students are adding and subtracting fractions, but one of the most common is that they just take those numerators and add them together and take the denominators and add them together. I like to go back to the concrete models to prove that 2 6 and 1 4 does not equal 3 tenths. And then something I, I've always asked fifth graders is like, okay, so when you look at this, I don't want to tell them, but then look at your model. Where do you see tenths in your model? Right. So let's take those pieces, the 2 6 and the 1 4, and I'm going to put them into a linear um, sure. model, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And okay, so we have our 2 6 and our 1 4, and I've put it underneath my fraction bar that is one whole. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put those three tenths next to my two sixths and one fourth that have been added together. Mm -hmm. Do you think they're going to be the same size, Daryl? No, because based on everything we've done, I mean, if we're saying two six plus one four, I mean, how does that equal three tenths? And the three tenths, if I put those three tenths underneath, they're not even as big as the two six. They're different. They're that th when we say tenths. That's a different size piece it than is, six. It is, and it's a or smaller fourths. piece than six, and it's smaller than fourths. Right? And, and that that pattern should be third grade should know that about right. the size of the piece with the number. But I do think we need to go back to those yes. concrete models to prove to them that it does not equal three tenths. Exactly. Right. And then we can again go through that process with um, exchanging the pieces for twelfths to show that now my pieces are all the same size. I have four twelfths and I have three twelfths that I'm putting together yep. to add. And I know that altogether that's going to be seven twelfths. So two six plus one fourth does not equal three tenths. It does equal seven, seven twelfths. twelfths. And I know that my equivalent fractions are four twelfths and three twelfths. Right. Thank you for joining us for this session of Dive in 5. We will see you back next time. Bye.